Hi, everybody. Welcome to Code Break. Uh, my name is Hadi Partovi. I'm calling from Code.org headquarters here in our studio. Uh, actually, no, I'm just at home. Let me change out my virtual background. This is my living room, uh, and I'm joined with my daughter, Sophia. Sophia is going to be the soundboard manager. And we're joined here uh, with a whole bunch of folks. There's uh, about 1,200 people joined in on Zoom already. Uh, and uh, last week, we had 10,000 viewers streaming live on Facebook. And there's people joining in uh, as, we, as we're talking still, about 10 or 20 per, per second. Uh, last week, we had 10,000 viewers joining from places as far away as India and Spain and Greece, Israel and Azerbaijan at all hours of the night. Uh, thank you. We're hoping together to, to build the world's largest live interactive classroom. If you enjoy what we do here today, please invite others to join as well. If each one of you invites two, two other parents or families to join, we should hopefully be able to double every single week. I want to introduce our first special guest today, Lindsay Scott, who's an actress, model, and also an awesome software engineer. Lindsay, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, yeah, thanks for asking. How are things in Los Angeles? They're good. I've been home, obviously quarantined, but I I've enjoyed being home. I think it's nice to have this time to be at home and maybe learn something new or, or try something that I normally wouldn't have that time to do. Um, because do I'm normally you have any thoughts you want to share with the millions of students who are at home without school? Oh, yes. I think that Code.org code especially is a great way for you to maybe spend your time. Uh, you can spend the next couple weeks in quarantine or however long it takes, and then you can come out with a great new skill set. So That's you yourself have been successful both as a model and an actress, but I'm most interested in your computer science background. Uh, can you share about how you got into computer science and what you're doing with it? Sure. So I went into Amherst College knowing that I wanted to act. Um, but throughout my time there, I made my way into computer science class and I loved it so much that I ended up double majoring in both theater and computer science. All right. And now it's perfect. Um, I'm able to program from home um, here in LA and then normally go out and act. And it's been a great way to fund my acting career while I'm trying to work through that. That's great. Yeah, Lindsay's got an incredible reputation as a software engineer. And in fact, on Stack Overflow, which is one of the top websites for coders to ask questions and answers. She has all sorts of questions that people ask her about iOS engineering and making apps, which she's done a lot of. Oh, is that your kitten? Yeah, that's Jade. You want to introduce her? <laughs> Hi there. All right, so before we start, uh, we're going to do our joke of the day, our computer joke of the day. So Lindsay, why was the computer cold? I don't know, why was it cold? Because it left the windows open. <laughs> Good one. Great right. tag team let's, joke. Let's get a chance to say hi to all the other students who are joining us around the country. So if we could switch to gallery view, uh, and we're going to unmute everybody. So if you could. Uh, oh, wow. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 Now let's hey, Brian, what's up? All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to say hello to the audience who's not on camera. Uh, yes. If everybody can see you have a chat button on your screen. If you're on a tablet or phone, you may need to tap the screen to see it. If you click the chat, what you need to do is to click the little blue drop down that says and choose to all panelists and attendees. And this way you can type in uh, there and everybody can see it. If you could all tell us where you're from. And Lindsay, if you could read where people are from in the- So many people, it's so hard to read so fast. Illinois, Tennessee, Puerto Rico, Nevada, Florida, let's see, other countries. We have Orlando, Memphis, Bellevue. Awesome. Um, now, can, can people also type what, uh, what grade they're from? Lebanon, Honduras. Can you type in your grade? Yeah, what grade are you in? Fifth grade, twelfth grade, eleventh, seventh, eighth. Do we have any grade, younger kids grade. here? Fourth grade. Okay, third, first, and third. Oh wow. And so then the last thing I want to ask if people could wow twenty fifth grade I saw. Um, <laughs> I want to get a sense of people's uh, computer science experience. 
If you could type in uh, either one if you're a beginner, two if you're intermediate, three if you're advanced. Okay. Seems like we have a good mix. Some, some people are four. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'm even a four. <laughs> yeah, I think I saw 10,000 go by. Yeah, 10,000 right, well. is. We're going to have an opportunity to hear from, uh, to, to basically do all three different levels. Uh, so we're going to start with much more beginner stuff. As we go along, I want to give people, let you know that there's a button for Q&A. So if you have any questions as we go along, you can click this button. Uh, those questions will come to the uh, a team at code.org who will try to answer them in real time. And we'll get hopefully a chance later in the episode to answer one or two questions live. Uh, for today, the the agenda we have is we're going to talk about prototyping and we're going to start learning about first designing an app or designing on paper. Second, we're going to build an interactive card. And then lastly, we're going to do rapid app design. Those are the sort of three stages of what we're going to be doing. Uh, and as we go through this, I also want to call out, this is our second time hosting code break. It is not a simple thing to pull together with such a large live audience. Uh, we have almost twice as many people today as we had last week. Uh, if we run into problems, we're going to learn an important computer science concept called debugging. Oh, this is a bug that Sophia drew. Uh, and so when we run into bugs, we'll just deal with them. If we have tech issues, if people have trouble calling in, et cetera. Um, so I want to start by showing some of the things that the students who joined us last week submitted. We asked for people to, we, we learned about algorithms and how to make art using code. And so many people shared your drawings to social media, and I want to share some of these on my screen. So this one is from Licia Tatuli, uh, and this was a whole team of 20 kids in Milan, Italy, that drew these different shapes. And she said, even if we're locked down in our houses, we had fun. Uh, so thank you, Licia, uh, for calling in from Italy. And this other one I want to show is from Arna Biswas, his daughters Miranlini and Sharanya uh, sent in these two drawings. And then they've been coding all week, uh, making different drawings. Uh, Arnab, are you there with us right now? Can we unmute Arnab to just say hi briefly with his daughters? They're on. Yeah, hi. Hi, hi, Sharanya and Miranlini. How are you doing? Nice. Great. Um, so it's great to see you and they're calling, they're dialing in from Bangalore, India. What time is it in there in Bangalore right now? It's 10.40 right now. 10.40 in the night. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. So today's computer science word of the day is prototype. Uh, today, thank you, Sophia, for this design. We're gonna learn how to prototype starting with design on paper. Uh, but Lindsay, since you've made so many apps, what do you do when you are making an app? Have you ever started by prototyping in some other tool before you get started? Yeah, definitely. Prototyping is a great way to work out what your app will look like or do before you put too much energy into it. Um, it's a great way to show clients or, or customers what you have to look forward to and, and hopefully they like it too before you get started. All right, so I want to show sort of a view of an example of an end result. What we're going to do today is prototype and then build an interactive card. Uh, this here, if you see my screen, is an example of what the end result will look like. And let me see, I'm not sure if it's showing for people yet. Oops, that's my whole screen. Let me come back and do it differently. All right. This is what an example of an interactive card would look like that we're going to build. So you have a little bear here that you need to feed and you can click on different food for him so he can eat the watermelon or he can eat the hamburger and he gets bigger as he eats food. Each time we click on something, the bear gets bigger and finally he says, happy crowd break and we fed the bear. It's a very simple card with a background and a character and it then reacts to different behaviors. We're going to make a similar interactive card right now, but we're going to start by designing it uh, on paper first. Uh, so I wanna show the example of what it's gonna end up looking like. And now we wanna have a number of students basically join us to help Lindsay design her card. So can we welcome David, Lana, and Claudia? David. Uh, you're all gonna be now unmuted so you can say hello. So David, are you there? 
Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi, David. Hello. Where are you from? Puerto Rico. Oh, Puerto Rico. Nice. So what grade are you in? Six. And have you ever done computer programming before? Well, they give it, they give it for a grade here in school. Oh, yeah? That's Our technology great. teacher. Oh, that's yes. amazing. And Lana, are you there? Hi, Lana. Uh, so, where are you from? Um, I'm from Massachusetts. Sorry, my, my animals just made a little noise fighting in the background. <laughs> where did you say you were from? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Where in Massachusetts? Seekonk. Okay, I went to school in Massachusetts, that's why I asked. Um, so, what grade are you in? Third grade. And what's your favorite subject in school? Um, reading. Reading? And Sophie, and Sophie, are you there with us as well? Yeah, hi. Hi, Sophie. Hi. How are you? And Good. where are you from? Bellevue, Washington. Bellevue, Washington. And um, what grade are you in? I'm in ninth grade. Okay, nice. High school. Um, so how, how are you enjoying uh, your quarantine? Is there something fun you've been up to? Uh, I've been studying. I've been doing coding. And oh, I've been working on my business too. I have business. Oh wow, you have a business? Yeah, that's I, amazing. Like, yeah, I have a fashion bag company. That I, oh wow, well that's a great way to spend time at home, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's so inspiring to be able to have Thank your, you. your, your own business at your age. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna switch to going to the prototype. So Lindsay. We want you to start by asking the folks who are on screen uh, uh, basically questions to basically help you design a card. Uh, so, and for everybody else who's calling in, if you have a paper and pen, please draw along with Lindsay. So we're gonna draw the card in the top part of your paper. And those of you who are live on camera, you can do the same as well. Uh, so go ahead, Lindsay. Uh, Okay, so let's see. First, we need to figure out what the background should be. Um, so should it be a city, a farm, um, a desert, underwater, a, a rainbow with sun? Any ideas? You guys can type, type it in the chat. Underwater. Underwater. People really seem to like this underwater idea. So, uh, but that's very hard to draw. Uh, space, that's a good one. Um, let's do the rainbow. Yes, I can I can draw a rainbow. Okay, and so next, what type of characters or objects should we put on the card? Um, we can have a person, an alien, a bunny, a cow, a crab, a fish, car, kangaroo, anything. I see some um, things in the chat, but do we have any ideas also from our panelists? Panelists. Um, David or Lana or Claudia, do you guys have any thoughts on that? Maybe like a Martian or something? A Martian, okay. I like that and it seems like some people in the chat have said, said alien too, so, so that works. We'll have a, a rainbow and an alien. Oh gosh, I need to draw an alien. Okay, um, well while I'm working on that, so uh, what, the next thing we need to figure out is what happens when we tap the alien. Actually, let's come up with two objects. There's the alien, and what else? Let's figure out one more object. Sophia, do you want anything? Uh, what's up the chat? I see a lot of people saying cats. So we'll do a cat and an alien with a rainbow in the back. <laughs> so what happens when we tap that alien or cat? Um, it can, they can move, they can jitter, they can wander around, they can spin. Um, they can say something. Any ideas? Um, panelists? Someone maybe, said in the chat. Yeah, I like maybe that. we can like have it spin around or something to that effect. That sounds good. We'll have the maybe like do uh, maybe like do like a default dance like somebody said here like in Fortnite or something. <laughs> Unfortunately, the program we're going to use doesn't have that kind of capability, but I'm sure you guys can create that in code sometime later oh, on. Okay. Um, but so we'll have the alien spin. Um, and what's the other uh, creature we chose? 
Is the cat. Maybe like teleport or something? Oh, teleport. No, we can't do that either, unfortunately, but we can make them move, walk around, uh, say something. Maybe, maybe it should say something. Anybody have an idea for what the cat can say? People are saying- And it doesn't have to be meow. meow or what's up? Happy <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> Happy April Fool's Day. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right, so the cat will say, so I'm going to write down these behaviors at the bottom of my card, and I guess well, I'll do that. Do you, do you happen to have any trivia for me, Hadi? Um, so, uh, so Lindsay's basically drawing to write down basically what's going to happen in terms of the code that we're going to do. So she's saying that when the alien is uh, clicked, you want the alien to do some spinning. And when the cat is clicked, you want the cat to say, Happy April Fool's Day. And yes. you're writing this down basically just to keep notes of what we want to create in code. Uh, and the reason to do this on pen and paper at first is to plan out what you're going to do in code. It's, it's oh. easy when you're in code to basically make mistakes and then get stuck what? and then uh, change your code as you go. When you write down a plan in advance, you can then basically organize your thoughts. And then once you're coming on the computer, you have a clear idea of what you want to build. Now for something this simple, you don't necessarily need to do that, uh, but it helps to organize your thoughts in advance to do this. Lindsay, are you close enough to done to, to show yeah. us your finished part on paper? Yes. All right. All right, let's see what you have. Your rainbow. So alien. here's my uh, rainbow and my alien and my cat. And then it says, uh, and I think it says it in reverse on camera. But what it says here, it says when alien is clicked, it spins. Uh, the cat says, April, April Fool's Day when it's clicked. And Sophia, did you make one of these yourself too? Yeah. Can you show yours? Sophia drew something very similar. My um, obscure picture. And can everybody um, else, can we see all the other students on camera code. so we can see and hold up if you made drawings what you made? All right, so we're going to next jump into coding to actually create something that does something like this. And thank you, David, Lana, and Sophie for joining us. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to learn how to turn this paper prototype into an interactive card that Lindsay can share. Uh, but first, uh, I want to get, give me just one second. Uh, first, we want to do trivia time. Sophia, are you ready for today's trivia question? All right, so we're going to open a poll for everybody to take a true and false question. You're going to see a poll pop up on your screen. Uh, if you're following on Facebook Live or, or some other platform, you won't. But today's I trivia question is a true or false question. True or false, the term bug or debugging was first used by Admiral Grace Hopper, who found a real life bug stuck inside a computer during the 1940s. So we're going to keep the poll open. Uh, there's 2,000 people uh, in the live Zoom who are, who are able to answer the poll. All right, uh, can we get the results of the poll up on the screen for everybody to see? All right, so it looks like 75% of you said that the answer is true uh, and 25% of you said the answer is false. The correct answer is false. Even though Grace Hopper is known for having popularized the term bug or debugging, both terms had existed before. As far back as Thomas Edison in the 1870s and throughout the 1900s, uh, bugs and uh, those words were used in the context of flaws in engineering or robotics that predated modern computers. Uh, but Grace Hopper, the first recorded incident where an actual real life bug, a moth, uh, got stuck inside a computer and caused a problem. Uh, because she was such a well-renowned computer scientist for the work that she did uh, in, in innovation with compilers, she basically has been known as a person who popularized the term. All right, so now we're going to uh, switch to having some real code written, and my sidekick, Sophia, is going to be the one doing the coding, and Lindsay is going to be instructing Sophia how to basically create the interactive card that we saw. I'm going to start by sharing Sophia's screen. Sophia, are you ready? Yes. Yeah. Sophia was born ready. All right, so now we see Sophia's screen. And Lindsay, are you ready to give Sophia instructions? 
If Lindsay's on mute, can we unmute Lindsay? So I'm gonna explain what we see on the screen. On the left side of the screen here is where the card is gonna be made. On the middle are the commands that Sophia can use, and these are in different categories like world sprites, et cetera. And on the right side over here is where we're gonna make her code. Lindsay's a computer scientist, so she does, she works in much harder tools than this, but she spent the night last night to learn this tool to help teach it to Sophia. So go ahead, Lindsay. Oh, Lindsay is still muted. Can somebody unmute Lindsay? All right. Uh-oh. Yes, there we go. Oh, okay, perfect. So when run, we're going to, when run is tapped, we want to create a background. So go to world. And we're going to set the background. You can drag it into the um, project project underneath run there you go and then we're going to change that to uh, tap the down arrow or tap city and we're going to change that to rainbow which, let's do rainbow with sun i think there's a rainbow with sun option okay well rainbow works too oh nice and uh, next we're going to add the sprites which are the objects so tap sprites underneath the blocks menu and you're going to make a new sprite. So drag that into the project. And this sprite is an alien. So can you, can you change that to an alien? <laughs> All right, that's alien-like. And uh, to change the position of the alien, tap the pin next to the 200, 200, and then you can move it around wherever you want, and it'll change the coordinates for you in the code. All right, that looks good. And we're going to add one more sprite. So go back to sprites. And next we're going to add, so drag in the make new sprite. You got that, this, Sophia. <laughs> and you're going to change that to a cat. And um, if you don't see a cat here, for anyone who needs help, you could tap more at the bottom and uh, tap animals. And you should be able to find a cat here. So tap the cat and then go back to the uh, down arrow and you can find the cat in that menu. There you go. And again, you can tap the pin and move the object around. So now that we've got the scene in place, the next step is to uh, react when the objects are clicked. So when the alien is clicked, it's going to spin. In order to do this, you're going to go to the events menu and drag in the when clicked. Uh, and you're going to actually put it separate from the other code because it happens not when the, when the uh, project runs, but when the item's clicked. So you could change that to the alien. Great. And we're going to add a behavior. So go to the behaviors. And let's find the behavior of spinning. Either left or right, I think either works. Oh, uh, one more thing, back in behaviors, um, scroll up and you're going to add the sprite begins to connect the click action to the spinning action and then put the spinning when the uh, click action begins, perfect. Now um, change that sprite object uh, to the alien. So when the alien is clicked, the alien will spin left. Now let's uh, try running it now to see what happens. Okay. Right. Well, that alien's actually spinning kind of fast for its own liking. We don't want it to get sick. So let's uh, press the edit button, stop the project, press the edit button, and let's slow down that spin by uh, by cutting down the number of degrees it, it, um, it goes for each timer cycle. So let's change that to 10. You can edit any of the behaviors that you actually see. So Sophia, you can change the speed of the spin here. Yeah, so you could change that number 10 to one. Let's be gentle to this alien. Nice. Perfect. Okay, now let's try running that again. Much better. All right, let's stop it for now. And then we're gonna add the one last action of the cat saying happy April Fool's Day. So 
uh, back in the events menu, drag in a click action, change that to a cat, and then the option to print something actually is in the world menu. So tap world and you could drag in print and put it right under with clicked when clicked and you can type in happy, happy April Fool's Day. Fast type okay. Perfect. Okay. So now that everything's in place, we can build and run. Well, build <laughs> and run. Normally I build and run because I have to compile the apps, but run. And then you can click them and see it do the, these things. Yeah, and now we can click. Happy April Fool's Day, it says it at the top. Yeah. That so was there we have simple to that everything works. And one last thing I want to do just for the more advanced people. In the top right corner, there's a code button. So let's take a look at what we did in code um, in the top right of the workspace. There we go. So that's real code underneath all of that action. Pretty cool. So this is the JavaScript code behind everything that we did. Uh, it includes the blocks that we dragged out, but it also includes the definitions of the various behaviors as well. Uh, so you can see spinning uh, is defined as how it's, it's done. So behind all these blocks, there's real JavaScript. And even though drag and drop coding is the way people start learning it, uh, as you get more experience, you end up using uh, sort of a typed programming language where you need to type in the code. The capabilities are very, very similar, and it's more about thinking uh, how you want to put your code interactions together. What we built here today was relatively simple. There's a lot more actions, a lot more types of events, and a whole lot of types of behaviors for what you can do with, with making an interactive card. And when you're done making your card, you can click the share button, and then you get a link to the card that you can share and send to a friend. You can send it to a phone or send it to your mom or dad's phone to get the, your interactive card on your phone. If you have an account on Facebook or Twitter, you can post it to the social media. Uh, and so basically, after you're done making your creation, you can share it. And at the end of this episode, we're going to email all of you the information for how to make your own card. And we'd love for you to share what you create. And then on next week's show, we're going to showcase the best things people created. Um, so. Uh, next, I want to see if we have any questions for Lindsay. Let me stop doing my screen share. Uh, and if you remember, we have the option for doing Q&A. Sure. So I see one question already. Now is a good time for to go through them. Um, so Chad yeah. asked, don't I have to use Swift or iOS programming? Um, that's a good question. It's a bit more advanced, than, but I'm definitely going to answer it. Um, so. With, with the programming I do, um, you can either use Swift, which is Apple's programming language, or you could use Objective-C, which is the older language that was originally the only language you could use for iOS development. So yeah, so now I normally code in Swift. You normally code in Swift. What we'll do later today is using a code tool called App Lab, which is great for prototyping. It doesn't okay. create iOS apps, it creates what's called web apps. The benefit of web apps is that you can see them on your phone very quickly, and you can see them on a page. Uh, on any kind of phone rather than uh, the, the process of building a real iOS app has a lot of extra steps uh, and you also need a, a more powerful computer and you can only actually do it on a on a uh, Mac, I believe. Um, so. You can partition a drive on a different computer. But yeah, I mean, that's a great way. I, I need to check out this tool before I, you know, get into the hard coding. Definitely a good way to prototype, sounds like. Um, and Akira, uh, our, one a person from code.org named Mira is on the line as well to ask questions from the, the broader audience that have used the Q&A button. Akira, are you there? I am Hadi. Hi, how are you all? Hi. Um, so we have a question for both Hadi and Lindsay first. Why do you both like coding so much? What drew you to the field? Um, for me, it felt like as soon as I got into the class, I was just so excited. I was raising my hand all the time because it felt like I was playing logic games. So even now, it, it still feels like I'm solving these little logic games, and then I end up with this masterpiece at the end of creating exactly what I wanted to create to begin with. It's, it's very exciting to me. Uh, I got into coding when I was uh, growing up in Iran, and this was actually during the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, it was a terrible place to grow up. My neighborhood was getting bombed every single night, so I, we spent every night in the basement holding our ears, hoping our house wasn't going to get destroyed by the bombing. 
Uh, but so for me, the computer that my dad brought my bought home for my brother and I was our one escape from a really terrible world. And we learned how to code on that. And then when we came to the United States as immigrants, uh, my family didn't have a lot of money, but as, as early as 14 years old, I started interning at tech companies. And so for me, back then, coding was a way to make, basically make extra money uh, and to help our family get a, our lives started in, the, in a new country as immigrants. Uh, but really, the beauty of computer science and the reason I started Code.org is not just because you can get jobs as a code, because of the creativity, because it helps teach you how to think. And even if you don't want to get into computer science as a career, it helps give you an understanding of how the world around you works. Everything around us is, is increasingly impacted by technology. And the confidence of knowing you can build that technology yourself, you understand how it works, you can program the world rather than having the world program you, is something that every student should have the opportunity to learn. Yeah, that's one thing I love about programming is that any interest you have can be made better by technology. And to have the tools to build that is really powerful. And Lindsay, we have one more question for you before you go. Um, this person said, you're successful in so many fields. You're an actress, you're a model, you're a computer scientist. Uh, you basically do it all. What advice would you have for a young coder who is also interested in other things? How have you learned to balance all of your priorities? Yeah, I've been really lucky. So at a certain point I was modeling and it was so time consuming, that was all I could do. Um, but then I, I moved out to LA to focus on my acting. And in order to focus on it, I knew that I had to make some money from doing something. And so that's when I started doing client work uh, for different app companies. And so it's a, been great that I've been able to make a living from doing that and support my acting work. But it's also been great that I've been able to use my interest in acting to inspire some of the apps that I create. Um, like I just created this self tape app for actors. And um, it's just nice to have that perfect meshing of my interests and my skill set. Thank you so much, Lindsay, and thank you, Hadi. Thank you. And if we could switch to gallery view uh, and give a chance for everybody to say goodbye to Lindsay. Thank you so much for joining us, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay, I'm Scott, to watch the rest of it. Am I allowed to, to oh, like? No, you're allowed to stay on if you want to. I wasn't sure if your time is limited. We'd love I to have some you. Some of it, at least. Background. Wonderful. Well, then you can get to to see how App Lab works as well. Uh, so thank you, Lindsay. Uh, now we're going to welcome our next special guest. Mark Cuban needs no introduction, and we are so lucky to have him on the second episode of Code Break. Uh, Mark, I'm here with my daughter, Sophia. Hey, uh, Sophia. And we're by a few dozen students you see on camera. Uh, there's about 1,700 students live on Zoom, and on Facebook, we, we're going to have on the order of 10 to 20,000 folks watching the live stream as well. Congrats. How are you I'm hanging in there. Um, you know, it's fascinating listening to your story, Heidi, growing up and what you had to deal with because it's relevant to what people are going through today. I mean, we've tried to teach my, our kids who are 10, 13, and 16, that you may think this is bad, but what others have gone through, this is, this is nothing. I mean, to, to wake up to bombs and not know if your building's still gonna be there or where you're gonna live, it's, you know, it's, it's a lesson of resilience that I'm glad you could share with us. Thank you. Uh, for folks in the audience, if you have questions for Mark, uh, again, use the Q&A button and we're gonna have a chance to have some of those questions answered. When you type your question, please enter your name and also where you're from so we can call that out. Uh, so Mark, 90% of the students in the world are now studying home alone. Uh, do you have any words of inspiration or encouragement for them? You know, this is the chance you have if there's something you really like to do to try to be great at it. You know, I started going back on the piano, which I haven't been in years, you know, just picking up some of my favorite songs and, and annoying my kids and my wife. But you know, re picking up books that, that I wanted to get to. Um, whatever it may be, however you learn, what a great time to learn. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the first, you're, you're so well known for the work on Shark Tank and also for, you know, for owning a basketball team. But the very first companies that you started as businesses were tech companies. Can you tell us more about those and how you got you your know, early start? One of my first jobs out of college was working with, for a software company way back when. And I started a company called Micro Solutions in the 80s, and we were one of the very first companies to connect PCs together when back then people thought there was no need to connect a PC together. I'll just carry my floppy disk from this PC to that PC. 
And so I started doing low quality networks. I taught myself to code. I, I didn't have a technical background, but the way I always looked at technology was that there's the, the person who developed it, whether it was software or hardware, then there was everybody else. So I was effectively tied for second place. And if I worked hard to learn it, then I could learn it as well as everybody, maybe even as much as the, the original developer. And that gave me an edge to be able to apply it to different businesses. And that's how I grew that business. And then after I sold that, took a few years having fun. And then in the mid nineties, when the internet was starting to take off, um, a, a friend of mine from college, Todd Wagner and I decided, you know, with this new internet thing, there's gotta be a way we could do audio over the internet so we can listen to Indiana basketball. And effectively we had the first um, streaming business in the country, in the world. And that was a company called AudioNet. And, you know, it was, it was an early, early version of what we're doing right now. Yeah, that's great. So, you know, learning computer science is what we're here about. And it's obviously part of how you got your early start. Uh, there's about 100,000 students in the country right now that are taking a course called Computer Science Principles. And for many of them, they're taking it as an advanced placement course for great. college credit. Uh, and in that course, one of the things you work up to is to build and prototype an app at, at, as something that you build by the end of the course. And the students who take that course on code.org use a tool called App Lab for their prototyping. And in fact, the AP exam, unlike most AP exams, which are like a multiple choice test and just Q&A, you actually need to submit the app you create to the college board and you're graded not only on your coding but also on your creativity. It's a wonderful course. That's great. If, if there's any high school students in the audience, if your high school offers CS principles, you should take the class. And if it doesn't, I hope you encourage your principal to ask, add it to the class schedule with help from code.org. So for the next segment, we've selected three students to pitch their app ideas. Great, right. a little Shark Tank, I like it. It is like Shark Tank, um, but there's a, there's a twist. They're, they're gonna pitch you their ideas, they're gonna get your feedback, but uh, for the choice of what, which app we're gonna pick, we're gonna let the entire audience choose one winner. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Cool about this, since our word of today is prototype, what we're going to do is we're going to let the audience choose the winning idea, and then we're going to prototype it today live in code. Uh, awesome. And not only we're going to prototype in live in code, if you have a phone separate from the screen you're watching on, you'll be able to get it right on your phone by the end of the hour. Uh, That's awesome. So I'm not sure that's ever been done before. It's our first time doing everything here. So uh, if there's only one way to find out, right? please forgive us. Uh, so we've now selected three students to pitch their app ideas to get their feedback from Mark. Um, we've got, had so many amazing student submissions, by the way, since we announced this on Friday, I made the time to look at all of them myself and I was blown away. The, the three we picked were ideas that I thought we could prototype in real time because we want to teach you how to make an app and coding it live. So Mark, awesome. we want you to hear from each student, give them feedback on the idea. Uh, I'm going to introduce the students. My daughter, Sophia, is going to manage the one minute timer. Uh, if people go, she's going to say, ready, set, go. And if people go over time, she's going to make a sound. Sophia, do you have a sound? <laughs> do you have ready, ready? Sophia, do you want to practice your sound first? <laughs> All right, that's the out of time sound. Uh, and then Mark, after each pitch, we want you to ask probing questions, give sure. feedback, and have them have a chance to talk with you. So first we have Yasmin and Antea from Nevada, and Yasmin is going to present. Yasmin, are you there with us? Uh, yes, I'm here. Hi, Yasmin. Hi. Okay. Um, do I start now? Yes. Ready, set, go. Did you know that 57% of Generation Z doesn't know what they have in their savings? Quagga Savings will fix that. Our app is a financing app that teaches young adults how to manage their expenses through a reward system. Last summer, I had a difficult time managing my finances. Um, I, I didn't have the organizational skills needed to create a balanced budget. As I spoke to my peers, I realized they had the same problems as me. As young adults, we were given many new financial responsibilities, that, or many new financial responsibilities but do not have time or skills to create a balanced budget. This app divides your salary into different categories that you choose, such as housing and food. And each category, you set a price range. And if you stay within the price range, you earn points. But if you exceed it, you lose points. And once you accumulate a certain amount of points, you can win prizes, such as gift cards and Quokka merchandise. This reward system is used to, um, to make saving more fun for our users and ultimately prepare the youth for fully entering the consumer world. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> 
finish Great just job. before the sound. I wish, I wish you could teach all the Shark Tank contestants to go that fast and be that succinct. Um, <laughs> It's a great idea. Now, there's a lot of competition out there. There's, there's others that deal with budgeting. Um, but I think if you um, gear the app towards a younger audience like who's watching today, then there's a real need for financial education. Because to your point, most kids don't understand it. And even a lot of adults don't understand it. So the question I would have is, what kind of learning modules would you include so that um, kids can under learn to, so that kids can learn more about finance and how it works? So in our app, um, it's going to automatically, um, so it's going to divide your assignment in different categories that we base it on. So we're going to have, I forgot the percent rule, but I, it might have been like the 30, 20, 10 rule. I forgot. But right. in terms of distribution of where you yeah. put your money and how you save your money. Right. Right. And that's good. So, but I think, think the key to this is really working, partnering with some folks that can provide you a lot of educational materials, right? Because it's hard to put together a budget if you don't know what each category stands for. You know, it, it makes it more difficult. So this, and the second question is, will you be able to retrieve specific category amounts from someone's bank account or are you looking for them to enter it manually? So we're looking for them to enter it, enter their own categories manually and um, we'll sync up the purchases they make with their bank account. So they have like a transportation category. It's going to show the purchase history with like your gas and your insurance bill and everything like that. So you can Got keep it. it. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's switch to our next app, which is from Paige from Texas. Paige, are you there with us? Can we unmute Paige? Hello. Hi, Paige. Sophia, you want to kick her off? Are you ready? I'm ready whenever you are. Ready, set, go. Kids love repetitive games. My app uses repetition by asking the user to input one good thing about themselves per day. The first time the user does this, a small tree is planted, but each time they enter a compliment to themselves, it grows. As the user gets into the app, they'll start to receive notifications of positive impacts the tree has on the community, like being able to provide shade on a sunny day. Not only does the repetition allow the kid to have the habit or reform the habit of good self-confidence, but the symbolism of the tree shows that our own self-confidence positively impacts the world around us. Um, this can be used by parents, kids, teachers, and counselors to show kids that we can build our own self-confidence and have the tools we need to succeed. That's great. I think, I think it's a great idea. How are you looking to code it? What, um, what tools were you using, looking to use? So my, I'm in a computer science class right now and we're in mobile app and gaming and definitely like Hadi said, using a web app just so it was more accessible for people to get into it, but then also easier for me to code just because web coding is a little bit easier than Swift. And how are you, are you like daily inspirations to people to get them um, excited and remind them to continue to use the app? How, I guess the better question is, how are, you going to, how are you going to incent them to continue to use it? I like the reinforcement of the tree, but sometimes people need to be reminded. Sure, so I would probably, if I'm using a web app, I would set up an email system just so, you know, daily they would get an email or they could opt out of that if they feel they're comfortable, but um, definitely an email system and maybe adding things to the tree every once in a while, like cherry, making it a cherry blossom on a certain day, you know, just so they're excited to come back. And will you allow other apps like Instagram? Oh, absolutely. Cool. I like it, I like, I like the idea. Thank you. All right, so the third student is Trisha from Pennsylvania. Uh, so Trisha, we're gonna unmute you so you get a chance to introduce yourself. And Sophia is gonna give you your ready, set, go. Are you, are you there with us, Trisha? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Hi, Trisha. Hi, okay. Three, two, one, go. Hi, my name is Trisha and I'm a junior at the Episcopal Academy right outside of Philadelphia. It is my passion to save the Mother Earth that inspired me to start a Save the Planet Club in my sophomore year, and it had an overwhelming response. However, I always had one issue. 
When approached by one of my peers who asked how they can help in this global issue, I was only able to give responses that benefited my local community due to a lack of centralized global data. The homepage of my app lists sustainability issues such as ocean pollution, ozone depletion, and deforestation. The user can click one of these issues and will be taken to a page that specifies the broader concept. For instance, ocean pollution, the next step is plastic or wildlife. As interested, the user can select any one of these options, each with their own facts and figures page and resources to directly aid each issue. This format and many others can be provided for a variety of global problems, including COVID-19, and provides a succinct platform to make a change. Well done. So effectively, you want to be a homepage for all things related to um, sustainability for the planet. Essentially, there are like different options, hopefully, so you can pick what you're interested in and aid in that. Okay, and how will you source all the data that you'll present? So a lot of these come from reputable sources. So UN has a bunch of great sources, um, as does NASA. And I think if we collect data from those sites that are incredibly reliable, then the information will come together very quickly. And how, how will you make that connection? Will you, how do you think you'll be able to automate it? Are there APIs to your sources? Do you know yet? I, I don't. Okay. However, I'm hoping that it will become clear once that's all put together in one place. Yeah, because I think it could be really cool if um, the data updates in real time, so it gives people a reason to go back all the time, right? Because that's the hard part, sustaining their interest in the app. But it's a cool idea. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you so much. I wanted to thank all three of the panelists for your ideas. And I want to say also again that, uh, like I said earlier, we had so many amazing submissions from students. It was so hard to pick the three that we picked. And part of why we picked them is so that we could wrap it prototype them. So now we want to let the audience choose between these three app ideas and to see which one we're going to rapid prototype. We're going to put a poll on the screen uh, so everybody should get a chance to vote. Uh, for different screens, that poll might take a little longer to take. And for those who are watching on the Facebook Live live stream, it, it might be a little bit of, uh, you, well, you won't see the poll, but we'll show you the results afterwards. Uh, all right, so the votes are coming in. I can see them, but we haven't shared them yet. Uh, there's, I think I see a winner already, but it's a tight contest. I don't want to share the results yet until we have more votes in. So Paige. Well, let me vote. You guys wouldn't let me vote. I'm mad. <laughs> we didn't want to put too much pressure on the students. That's OK. All right, I think we're ready to share the results of the vote. Do you all see them? Can we share these out to the screen? It was a tight contest. Wow, that's really tight. Thank you so much to the other contestants. Uh, and Paige, if you could stick around, because uh, we're going to want your help for actually designing your app. Obviously, everybody can stay online, but we're going to mute folks. Uh, we also have, before we switch to the live coding, and, and Mark, since you're short on time, we were going to do the coding part after you uh, hang up with us. But we have a little bit of time for some additional Q&A for Mark. So students from home, if you remember, uh, you can submit your question using the Q&A box. We're gonna take two questions quickly because Mark is short on time. Uh, and congratulations to Paige, it was a great app. Now, Paige, you were my favorite. I kind of liked the way it turned out. All right, uh, so, so here's one from Mark, he says, or a question for Mark. A student says, I'm eight and I invest with my grandparents. Do you, have any, do you have any advice for how to wait or invest now? How do I learn from this time? <laughs> uh, that is a great question. That is a great question. First, I say watch Shark Tank on Friday nights on ABC because you'll learn about all different kinds of businesses because the key to investing in the stock market is understanding the company that you're going to invest in. There's, there's no real easy way. That's why people make and lose money. But at eight years old, I would tell you, look at the companies that you like to use. You know, maybe um, if, you, if you're a gamer, what companies are into gaming, but find the companies that you like. And if you think they're really popular, check to see if there's stocks for them and, and dip your toe in. And then in 30 years, 40 years, you'll be killing it. All right. Uh, another question a student asks, if a student has a great app idea and has a paper or coded prototype, where do they go to get it to the next level? And this is from- you go right. This is you go right here and you learn, you learn how to code. 
you know, it, you're, you're old enough to learn how to code and to prototype it and to put together, a, you know, at least a, a minimum viable product is what they call it, an MVP, so that you can see if it works. And you know what? I'm sure you have friends that are really into coding too. It's really fun to work with your friends and, and maybe even other family to put together apps. It's really, it's a great goal to set together, especially now. So you know what? I have total confidence you can figure it out. In the next two months, so many people are going to be staying and studying at home. It's a great opportunity to, to develop a new skill. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much for, the, for these. I'm going to actually suggest, uh, actually, there's one question that just came in. Somebody said, how do you use computer science to help your basketball team? We use it all the time. We call it analytics because we want to be able to monitor during a game, is a player getting tired? You know, we monitor heart rates. We monitor speed. We monitor a lot of different variables that we put into algorithms that tell us, okay, this is the path they're on. They're going to be tired too quickly. We track how they work out. We track their performance, how they shoot. Every piece of data we try to use to get a competitive advantage to help our Mavericks win a game. And I'll tell you this, if you want to work in sports, learn to code, learn statistics, and learn artificial intelligence. You may think because you're just in middle school or younger, you may be too young, you're not. Artificial intelligence is going to be so impactful that by learning your programming languages, any of them, you'll be prepared to really be ahead of the curve when you get to high school or college. All right. Thank you so much, Mark. Before you, we jump Hardy. into the rapid app design, uh, and Mark, you're welcome to stick around to watch. It'll take about 15 minutes, but I'm, I, I don't think you have the time because you have yeah, something. Yeah, I got to get rolling, but no, I appreciate it. Thanks, Sophia. You were great. And congratulations to Paige. All right. Well, thank you. And I'd like to invite everybody to wave goodbye to Mark, as we say, uh, for joining us. And can you set the applause? Thanks, guys. All right. Keep it up. Goodbye, Mark. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Adi. Uh, so now we're going to switch and introduce uh, a lady named Hannah Walden. Hannah, Hannah is one of the uh, top computer science teachers in the entire country, and she's one of the co-authors of the CS Principles course uh, that I was talking about earlier. So Hannah is going to be the one to actually rapid prototype uh, Paige's idea and, and app. So And also, Hannah has had a little bit of a head start for the last five minutes of Q&A just because we're short on time, so she... Uh, hopefully got started building some of it. Uh, but if we could unmute Hannah and introduce her. Hello, everyone. Hi, Paige. Congrats on your winning idea. I'm super excited to help you turn your mental wellness app uh, into this prototype now. Paige, are you there? While we're getting Paige unmuted, I'm going to explain a little bit what's on your screen here. So this is App Lab, and we're going to be working in App Lab. App Lab has a couple different modes. I have design mode and code mode. And in design mode, I can set up just how I want my screen to look by dragging on different elements. So I can put a button on, I can put an image in, I can put a drop down on that the user could select like this. Oops, let's go back to the screen that I'm on. There we go. And uh, many different things that I can do and I can drag and drop these around. I can change what's on these different buttons. I can say hello and have the user click on this button. So I can set all of this up in design mode. And then in a little bit, we're going to hop into code mode. And here is where I'm actually going to code the app. All right, Paige, are you there? Hello. Hi, Paige. All right, let's get started. So as Hadi said, um, while we were doing q and I got a bit of a head start. So I have just the basics of the app laid out here, but I want to get some ideas from you, Paige. So first off, what would you like for the title of your app? Oh gosh, you know, that's probably <laughs> one of the first things you should think of, and I didn't. So <laughs> maybe just, um, no pressure. I don't know, is this something we could ask the people watching for ideas? Uh Sure, Let's, why don't folks type in the chat what the title should be? Sure, all right. And Hadi, can you read from the chat for me? Giving tree. That's tree, a giving tree. Oh, perfect. Thank okay. You. I like that. Thank Love you. Love it. Okay. So uh, that's a great start. Um, and here's the basic layout of the home screen. And again, uh, Paige, this is all set so that we can change things around, we can move things. I've got an image here that starts as just a little seed. 
and then as the user interacts, it will grow into a tree. I've got a place down here. This is a user input, input box where users can type in their positive comments. But what I'm missing here is a button for users to click when they've added a comment. So I'm gonna drag okay. a button over here like that. And uh, let's actually, I'm gonna call this button my add button. And instead of having the word button on it, let's actually pick an icon instead. So I'm gonna look and see what I have here. Uh, all right, Paige, what do you like? I've got plus with the square, with the circle. What looks good to you? I like the, the plus square. Plus square, perfect. Okay, we can also change the color of the icon. Do you have a preference there? Um, maybe green. Okay, perfect. All right, let's go with a green that shows up kind of a bright green. All right, perfect. Okay, so now when the user puts something in, they're gonna click on this plus button, this add button, and uh, we will store their information and that will impact the tree that we see here. I also put together one other screen. This is the journal screen. So what I was thinking, Paige, was if I'm on the home screen and I add in different comments, um, that I've made about myself and I want to save them. Now I can go to my journal by clicking the growth journal button. And now I can see those things listed out here and I can go back to my home here. Before I do that, I have the journal right here and it doesn't have a background color, it's transparent. So I was wondering, Paige, do you have a color that you'd prefer for our journal background? Um, I like the light blue you chose. All right, let's see if I can get back to something. Do you mean like this light blue right here? Right. Perfect. Okay, so actually I can copy that hex code exactly. Go back over here, go to my background color, and now it matches perfectly. Okay. All right, so we've got the basic layout of our app. We've got the title, we've got the image, we've got a place for the user to add their comment and to add in the comment. Um, and then we've got the journal. So let's go code this app. All right, we're gonna work in block mode today. And first we're going to pick the variables that we're gonna store information in. So I'm gonna drag a variable block out here. And the first thing that I'm gonna store is the comment. And the next thing that I wanna store, I know I'm gonna wanna store how many comments the user has made. So I'm gonna say comments count. And right now, how many comments do I have, Paige? Zero. Zero. So let's set that to zero. I have no comments right now, so I'm just gonna put an empty string up here. It's completely blank. Now, here's what's gonna happen. When I click this button, I'm gonna get the information from here. It's gonna store in this variable up here, the comment variable, and then it's going to display the correct tree version. And to do that, I'm going to grab an on event block, this yellow on event block, I'm gonna drag it over, and I'm going to choose the ID for this button, which is the add button. So when the add button is clicked, I'm going to get the comment, and I'm gonna update my variable. So I'm gonna put the name of the variable here, comment, and now I'm gonna do some fancy stuff here. I am going to, and I'm actually gonna close down my toolbox so you can see all of this. First, I'm going to get whatever comments were previously stored. At the beginning, there's nothing, it's just blank. But as we add more and more comments, we wanna make sure that we don't forget those old comments. So I'm gonna get whatever comment was previously stored, and I'm going to add in a blank line between each comment. And I do that by doing a backslash N and then I'm going to get the text from this area. So I'm gonna say get text. And if I click out of here now, it will automatically turn those into blocks. And now I can pick the ID for this area, which is comment input. There we go. So that's now stored in comment. And each time we get a new comment, we need to increase our comment count. So I'm gonna do that here comments count equals 
comments count plus one. All right, now here's the fun part. Here's where we get to control our tree. And I wanna show you, Paige, if I go here into Manage Assets, you can see that I have a couple trees already uploaded here to show how the tree can grow over time. So we're gonna throw in an if statement here. I'm gonna choose this one. And basically we're gonna say, if comments count is over a certain number, we're gonna show a version of the tree. So the first one I wanna set is the one that will show the biggest tree. So uh, Paige, what's the biggest number you think for uh, the number of comments that should be for the final version of the tree? I mean, normally I'd say probably like, since it takes a couple months to form a habit, but we don't have that time, so maybe <laughs> seven. Perfect, and that is exactly what I would say too. Um, yeah, so normally this might be a couple thousand maybe, um, or a couple hundred, but since we're prototyping, I don't wanna type in a thousand comments to make sure this is working. So we're just gonna put in seven. And let's actually put in a couple more. So I'm just gonna go straight down and say comments count is over six. Comments count is over five. Um, let's do comments count is over four and one more comments count is over three and now we're going to put in our picture images so if i go into the ui controls drawer and i'm going to choose set image url i'm going to drag this over and again i'm going to close down my toolbox so you can see this better and the image here is called tree picture so i'm going to select tree picture and again, the most comments, that should get the biggest tree. And then the next one, I'm gonna actually copy this with Command C and then Command V. I can paste this down here to give me a little bit of a head start here. So the next image, we're gonna go with tree five and then tree four and then tree three and tree two. And finally, tree one, which is just a seed. And there we go. Okay, the final thing that we need to do here is we need to make sure that all of these comments are going to get sent over to our journal. So I'm going to pick the set text block, which is right here. And if I go over to my journal screen, I can see that this is called journal output. So I'm gonna look for that. Here it is, journal output. And I'm going to use that variable where I stored all of my comments and it will output it there. So let's give this a try. All right, Paige, I need a compliment. I really like your glasses. There we go, and I hit the plus button, oh no. Nothing happened when I clicked the plus button. Any ideas? Ooh, now it is happening. So do you know what happened there, Paige, why the tree didn't grow the first time I clicked the plus button? Mm, I'm looking at your code. Uh-huh. Would it be that um, you didn't have an else for one co compliment? You only had it for, oh wait. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. it. <laughs> that's exactly it. So I had tree one set all the way until I have four comments in. And once I get four comments in, then it starts showing an image. So okay. let's, let's actually bump that down a little bit so we can test this out quickly. So I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna say, um, I read a book today. And we hit plus. And now I could say, I, um, went um, to the kitchen and ate a really great sandwich. And plus, and notice it's starting to grow. And then the more comments that I added in, it would continue to grow and grow and grow. And now if I click on the growth journal button, it would take me to my journal, but we haven't programmed that. So let's do that really quick. So I'm gonna grab my on event again. I'm gonna go here and stick it on the bottom. 
and scroll down a little bit. And now I'm going to say when I click on my growth button, my growth journal button, if my screen does not lock up. I'm not sure. I think it's locking up a little bit on me. I'm going to actually see if I can go to text and see if I can fix it that way. I don't know if that's. Yep, that works. OK, so uh, my growth journal button. If we remember, that's called journal button. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type journal button. And by the way, what I did just there is one of the fun parts of App Lab. At any point, I can switch back and forth between blocks and text. So when I go to, when I click on the journal button, I want to switch my screen. So I'm going to actually go set screen to the journal screen. And also, I'm going to make sure that I have it set so that when I click on the home button, which is on the journal screen page, I'm going to go to my home screen. Okay, I think we're ready to try this out. Here we go. We're going to click run and hope for the best. So my first compliment or my first comment might be, um, I, uh, again, I read a book today. I, um, I ate an apple. I feel confident. I can program an app. I can be a computer scientist. And my tree is growing every time I click on that. And let's go to my growth journal. And now I can see that it is not displaying there. Maybe it is, but the text is actually blue. <laughs> so we need to make sure that in our design, we account for that so that our text, if you look here, text color is the same as our background color. So the text was there, we just couldn't see it. So one last quick test here. We're just gonna say test, 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 growth journal, and there it is. And our journal is populated and we can go back to our home screen. Now, Here's the really great thing. Actually, I'm going to change one quick thing with our text. If you notice it with our code, every time I typed in here, I had to delete my previous thing that I put in here before I could put something else. I can make that a lot easier with code if I just put in a new set text down here. And I'm going to say set the text for my uh, comment input, and I'm gonna set it to a blank string. So what this means is when I put a new comment in, it's going to reset it to be blank. So I'm gonna say test, and it's blank. Test, and it's blank. I go to my growth screen again, and or my growth journal, and it's ready. All right, this is really great, Paige. I really hope that you can take something like this and make it a full app. Again, this is just a prototype, but we were able to do this in 10 minutes, which is incredible. And for all of you at home, here's the really fun part. I am now going to share this app and I can click on send to phone. Now you have an option here to send to a US phone number. I am not going to be able to type in thousands of phone numbers right now. That would take way too long. So what I'm going to do um, is show you how to use this QR code. If you have a smartphone nearby, you can pick up your smartphone and turn on the camera and hold it up to your screen. So I'm going to do this right here. And once I hold it up to the screen, I get a pop-up. You might get something similar that says open in Safari. So I'm going to open it and let it load for a minute. And now I have Paige's app on my phone and I hope you do too. Hadi, do you have it on your phone? Sophia, show, your, show the app on your phone. On Sophia's kitty phone. That is so great, I love it. And Paige, this was such a great idea. It was really fun to build this with you. I hope that you continue to go with this idea and make it even better. And for all of you who are watching, we are going to share this app out and you can take it, you can remix it, you can make it your own, um, you can make something similar. 
please share it back with us using the hashtag code break. We really can't wait to see what you make. And again, congratulations, Paige. Back to you, Hadi. And everybody, I hope you got a chance to scan that QR code to get Paige's app. Uh, I want to say thank you, everybody. We're basically about to get done. Uh, I wanted to talk about assignments and homework or challenges that you can do uh, be between now and next week. Uh, we're going to send you uh, basically assignments or basically these challenges to either make an interactive card for beginners or to make an app or to do both if you want to try. If you aren't signed up via email, go to code.org slash break and enter your email and then share out what you create using hashtag code break. Also, because we're learning prototyping, what you're going to see when you get the email is some printouts that you can print first. For your interactive card, we want you to prototype the card first and write the behaviors before you jump into the code. Or if you're making an app design, print out to actually make the flow of what screen goes to what. So you have different screens that you can draw into your app and draw out with your handwriting what you want to create. Like we said, today's word of the day is prototype. And it's really important for any software engineer to take notes in advance and plan their code before they jump into it. So uh, parents, the weekly challenge email is also going to include activities that students can do on a mobile phone and a really fun unplugged activity that teaches uh, computer science without any screen time. So if you haven't already signed up, get on the mailing list by joining code.org slash break. Uh, lastly, if you have any feedback on how we can improve, please fill out our survey that's going to be emailed to you if you signed up. And if you enjoyed this show, please spread the word. If each of you invites two other parents and each of them invites two other families, and each of them invites two other families. We'll soon have 100,000 families here, and all of us can learn computer science together. I want to switch to the gallery view and unmute everybody as we say goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.